So here we go, setting up camera. Hi, I want to tell you about the five themes that we're going to be grouping some of our thinking about how we use communities and networks in innovative industrial design. So I'm going to take a leaf from De Bono's Five Thinking Hats, which if you haven't heard of it, you should Google it. It's a very interesting process to kind of look from different perspectives. And in fact, when we think of the five themes, they're five different perspectives. So I'm going to start with my, my first hat. This is a Kazakh hat. And the first theme is idea creation. So where do we go online to find the kind of diversity of ideas, possibilities, needs to help us in the initiation of the design process. So in, for an international development this pro project, this might be um, talking to people who are in touch with stakeholders, because not all, all of our stakeholders would be online, or working with development agencies, or simply working with bright people with bright ideas, because there's nobody that says the development professionals have all the answers in terms of what's needed. So going out there and looking for ideas means a broad network, asking on Twitter, looking at a particular group of people. So that's the first one. The second one is finding support for your work. So that might be fund, fun, or just any kind of support. So you've got a good idea. You want some people to work with you to do it. Again, a different group of people who might want to do something. Whereas anybody might give an idea, it's a different group of people who would say, yeah, I want to help you do that. So it's a unique kind of community from the first one. The third one, getting on my third hat here, is when we get down to work. And that's the work teams, okay? Work teams are often smaller groups in more enclosed in online environments that have said, yes, I'm going to do something. So it's about coordination of work, project management, using different techniques to do that. So it is a much more refined environment and much more closed. Next, we have the marketing of the products. So you've successfully designed a product. How are you going to get it out on the market? Because, you know, a great design that sits on the shelf, hmm, that's not going to be a success. So a marketing community looks about connecting your product with the end users. And again, that could be a very focused group of people or a very broad group of people. But one thing we know about communities and networks is that people recommend to other people. So your network may not be big enough to reach your market. But if you tap into the networks of your network's networks, if I said that right, it becomes very powerful. So that's an example. And then finally, with our last hat, here we have a hat from... Africa, we have our customer support communities. Now, once you've got a, 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 a product, there's all this really interesting stuff about how people use it, and often they use it in ways you didn't anticipate. So if we think about internal customer support, it may be inadequate for the diversity of use out in the market, particularly international development, if we, if we stay with that scenario. So thinking about how customers create their own space to support the product, or you create space that they can do that. So these are five broad areas. As you work in your group, one of the things you're going to do is explore existing examples of these types of communities, or you may even want to create one. But we've got a short period of time, so I would say create only if you're really sure you want to put the energy into it. But finding and tapping into and understanding these different types of communities gives you a broad base for when you go out and actually do design your work. So hopefully that's a beginning introduction. I'm going to post this on the site, and then if you have any questions or amplify the ideas or correct my misperceptions, we can do that. Okay, turning off the camera.